Hello and welcome. Today is the 14th day of uh, September 2017. Welcome. I did a video earlier tonight about buying and trading using a computer program. Buying low, selling high, so that if you ever get into situations where the markets are moving, they do all these types of things. This is this is a perfect example of the chart I would want to trade for something like this, but almost all of them are. Where the market's going higher, you have sell orders, you sell a thousand, buy back at 750, all that kind of jazz. And really that's kind of simple, but what I want to talk about within this is having a game plan to try to get the maximum gains and yet never sell out and sell out as far as never run out of tokens on the way up so that if you ever get into a situation where the market just completely goes straight up, there's no chance you could ever sell out. I'm going to explain that now. Let's assume that you have a fund where you have, say, 100 units and they're, say, priced at uh, 10K Satoshi. So you're in a situation where you tell yourself, okay, I... I want, I want to ride this on the way up. I want to sell high. I want to buy low. But here's the problem. What's going to happen if, say, I sell and then I, maybe it gets up to, say, uh, a much higher level. Let's say this is a... Uh, say it gets up to 20K, 50K, then 100,000 Satoshi. And I run out. And then I next thing I know, I see... Oh my goodness, it goes up to uh, 250K. And then it goes up to a half a million. And I was like sold out. I, 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 I wish I would have kept some of them. But I didn't. So anyway, what's, what's the best way to do this? And well, in a situation in here, if 10,000 units times 100... Well, that's worth like, say, one. Well, just because one times one with a bunch of zeros. And for what it's worth, that's going to make the calculations easy. Now, if you just buy, hold, and do nothing, then your portfolio would be doubled at the uh, 20 mark. But you want to sell some, you want to buy it back, all that kind of fun stuff. And when you get to the 20,000 mark, if you were to sell half of your position and go from 100 down to 50, well, that you'd still be worth one unit. So what I find is a nice little trick is put and find a number in between somewhere. So let's assume 75, 65, uh, 80, something like that. So let's assume you want to be at 80 when it gets to this point. Well, now 8 times 2 is uh, 1.6. So we'll start off with a number of 10. So 10 units would move up to 16. So that would be pretty impressive. Now in a situation here, we're going from 20 to 50. I'm just doing this to make easy numbers. That's a better than double. So technically speaking, if you sold half your position here from 80 to 40, you, it would, you would still have a higher value within it. But let's just assume you know it's going to go much higher. You want to sell a little bit, but... So this here, you only want to get rid of 60. So now this is worth 30 units. So we double it to 100. Maybe you sell 20 more. And now it would be worth 40 units in here. So you went from 10 units of value to 16 to 30 to 40. You've also lost 60% of your tokens. You had 100, now you have 40. So the remainder is tied up in Bitcoin, which you can maybe go on vacation with or buy some other cryptos or do whatever it is you want to do with those coins because that's your profits. That's what we're in here for is to make money. At least that's what I'm in here for. So now we go to 250. So we had 40. Let's assume you want to go to 25. And 25 to 25 would mean you're at 50 units. Now here you're in a situation where you're like, you know what? Oh man, I'm almost tempted to sell out because it's up so much. But you don't want to run out. You've been 
increasing your bankroll five times by finding a nice middle number. But maybe you just want to go 12 and a half. We'll do this for the final one. But in this case, we'll go to 15. So there would be uh, a little bit of a gain. This would be uh, 75, I think. And then assume here you go to like 8. And that would go to 80. So if you were right about something that could go 100 times higher, and I've seen codes do this before. Not many do the 100. But doing like 10 to 30 times higher is nothing. It's child's play for a lot of these codes. You've got yourself in a situation where if this keeps going higher, I mean, you could keep this going through. So if this goes to say a million, this isn't 10 million, this is 1 million. You go from 500,000 to 1 million. Let's say you go to 10 million and you have just one of them. Well, that would be worth 100. And if it goes to 100 million and you have 0 0.8, two, it would be worth 200. So what you'd be doing in this spot is using a strategy to ensure you never run out and you profit take along the way. Now let's look at this deeper. Let's forget all of this in here because that's long-term plan, but let's start from this point here. You have a hundred of a unit or yeah, that's priced at 10,000. And you know that, uh, that you want to have 80 going into 20,000. So you got 20 that you want to sell. So you have to, and I'm going to clear the screen in this uh, for this one. Okay, let's just assume now you knew 15,000 was a major level of resistance. But you also knew that 12,500 may be an area of intermediate term. Well, we need 20 to sell. We want to sell them as high as possible, but we want to equal them out as best as possible as well. Seven or so would be the average, but we want to allocate maybe most of them to here. So if we leave 10 here, or even say, yeah, 10 here because it's of major level, that would leave 10 more. So maybe you might do six here and four here. Now you can always do even numbers and just do it simple. You don't need to know these technical key numbers just using whatever levels, a little higher and lower, it works well. But now you'd get yourself that if the price goes all the way up to 22,000, you would have 80 uh, tokens, which is exactly what you'd want. And you'd have your profit taken. But let's assume that you were able to get lucky. You sold this off and it pulls back to 10K, which is where you put your buy order in. You sell at 10, 12, 5. Okay, so now I had 4. Now let's buy back, say, I don't know, say 4.5. And, and then, after you buy it, say it comes back. Okay, let's do it again. Let's sell 4 more again at 12, 5. And it hits. And now you got one half added to your bankroll. And then this one hits again. 15,000. Okay, you got a bigger sell order in. So maybe you're going to put, uh, maybe you put five here and maybe you buy back seven here. But none of them hit because it just keeps going higher. Then it goes to 20. You sell the six. You put a buy border back in, say, at around 15. You're looking to buy eight. Say that hits. So you have eight tokens. And now in here, you could technically sell the entire eight back again if you want and still be at your number at 20,000 and get some good gains. Or you could say, you know what? I'm going to sell six here. And now instead of having 80 tokens leaving 20, I have 82. And those are like two free tokens. So different mindsets are like that as the types of things that I can frequently do uh, along the side. So this is just different game plans. And then when this happens and you break, 20,000. Okay, well, 50 is the next number. We're leaving with 80. I want to have 60 here, so I got another 20 I want to sell within this range. And of course, if you left a couple more, now you got another 22 or 20, and maybe you got this half as well. I have 22 and a half to sell because of all this I was able to gain on the side. 
Because when you're doing this strategy and then you have markets like, uh, we're going to do this again. Let's assume in here you're able to you, you, you do all these things that you're doing. If you're back here, what you would notice is that your bankroll within your trades from where you were back at this exact same price here is better. And it was better here than it would be here. And then as the markets... Uh, keep going same thing again you also might notice when the market is here that it might be in and around or even higher than where it was in here because of all of the situations in which you're able to scalp in and out of place that if anything of even this magnitude happens and you're right here you're still ahead from the time the game started, although you'd lose a whole boatload and have a lot of buy orders that uh, would have been filled. Or you'd be hoping for the market to go higher, but moves like this don't usually, if hardly ever, come into play. So as long as the market moves, it works. Now, if the market gets really nasty where it does something like this just hardly ever has bull runs maybe you get the odd one here and there like that one but it just just grinds itself lower see if this is what you were trading and you've been doing this the whole time you're getting your ass kicked there's no other way of putting that because okay yeah you're gonna get some sell orders in here Maybe you time this one. Oh, this one you might be able to get if you bought here. And you're definitely selling on the current time here. But you'd be losing nonetheless. When the opposite of this happens. Again, normally if you're, don't, if you're not prepared for it, the most likely event is that you're going to run out of those coins or tokens at some given point. And it's a good loss in the sense of, okay, here I bought something, say, at 1,000. I sold out at 3,810. The mother bleep just went all the way up to like 400,000 and you're all pissed off, but you did get some profit along the way. And some of those tokens I've seen have uh, done that. And there's a lot of people, I just think about Bitcoin in itself. I thought I was the genius back in the day when Bitcoin, I got it at 50 cents. So I sold it all off at $48 or $75, even 200 Okay, how you doing? And uh, before I go, let's just put up the old Bitcoin chart. 